Welcome back to the channel. If you've not followed our adventures before, we're Dan and Stephen, a married couple currently living and travelling in our little 1996 VW camper van. The past 18 months we've tried to create a new work-life balance that allows us to see more of our beautiful country and beyond, figure out how to sustain it and navigate the challenges it brings. Recently we headed off to Europe and in this episode we witnessed some spectacular wild flamingos in Western Europe's biggest river delta before heading south into Spain. So sit back, relax and uh, come along dear. Morning. So I'm going to go for a run this morning. Um, in the sun's out, we've reached the Mediterranean Sea and there is a perfect rowing path I think so going to go and explore that but today is a day where we're going to hopefully go and find some flamingos so we're going to go to the flamingo park now they call it a flamingo park because they charge to get in um but it's not like a zoo or some kind of it's not even anything like that otherwise i don't think we would bother so basically this is to see the flamingos in the camargue region in their most in their natural habitat so the flamingos are wild birds here some of them actually stay here all year round um, some of them migrate to uh, North Africa further south in the in the winter but I, I believe a lot do stay here so yeah looking forward to that because I think there are meant to be lots here and because it's I've said it before but because it's Western Europe's biggest river delta and there are huge amounts of like what they call brine ponds where the um, flamingos I don't know, do they drink it? They eat out of it? I don't know what happens, but... It's their breeding ground, isn't it's it? It's their breeding ground, so it suits them anyway. So yeah, we're in the little town of Saint Marie de la Mer. Um, so that's on the French Mediterranean coast, again in the Camargue region. But yeah, we had a walk yesterday. A lot of it was kind of closed up. It's very touristy, very expensive, and it wasn't so easy to park here for compared to a lot of France. So we've got a place here. Uh, it's just a car park really, but it's 15 euros a night, which is a little bit steep, but there is water, which is good. I think there's a toilet, although it's not brilliant. Um, and the other options around here were kind of, it, it was like the first time we'd seen t things we see in England all the time, height barriers and strange things to stop people being in places. Um, but not too bad, there's still an option and it still, still seems like a nice little town. So we might have a walk around that first and then again in the day when everything's open and then go to the bird park. And that's it. See? I'm gonna have my cup of tea and go for a run. Wee! Wee. <laughs> After a cup of tea and a run, we briefly explored St. Marie de la Mer, which although very touristy, was still a pretty place to take a stroll around, especially the impressive church at its center, which originally dates back to the 9th century. We then headed on our way, straight for the wild flamingos. The Pont de Gau Ornithological Park in the Camargue region was established in 1949 by André Lamoureux and continued by his son, René, in the 1970s. Initially a small project, it evolved into a vast park with the aim of protecting nature within the region and with a helping hand, the marshlands here were steadily transformed into the perfect location for many wading birds, including storks, herons and egrets. And of course, it is a prime breeding ground and the only one in France for the brightly coloured greater flamingo. In the spring and summer, thousands of these birds can be seen with their young in the Camargue. Fewer numbers over winter here, but until March there is another reason to visit, for their flamboyant courtship dances. The park costs eight euros each for entry, and while some may prefer to seek out the flamingos in perhaps lesser known areas, the park is arguably your best bet for guaranteed sightings in huge numbers, and you can easily spend hours here wandering the trails and marshlands, watching these beautiful birds and their captivating behaviours.
Okay, so I've just been inside the Flamingo Park and wow, <laughs> it's just, that was so worth it. That was so worth it. Um, we've parked up, so it's not far out of the little town we were in just now, St. Marie de la Mer, I think, um, about five minute drive. And it's eight euros to get in, which, you know, is fine. I actually think that was quite worth it. So what's that, about six pound 50? I'm not hundred percent sure, um, but it is well worth it. You could spend a whole day there. Um, I was kind of rushing around. I say rushing, I was trying to film and photograph everything. Um, we've taken it in turns because we, so basically where this is in the Camargue region, we, there's a park up, um, there's like a lay by that's going alongside the road and there's a car park and the car park was full. Um, and there were only a couple of spots in the lay by, which is where we are. Uh, it's just to the side of the road, but we, we kept reading, um, some of this was on park for night, but some of it was elsewhere. And we just kept reading about cars being broken into and crime and things like that and you know you do see that everywhere and sometimes you've you've got to get over that kind of anxiety about the van and any vehicle I suppose and just just take the chance but there was so much written that we just didn't want to risk it so we've basically taken it in turns um I went in first and I said to Stephen, look, I'll tell you if it's any good. He wasn't too worried either way, but it was so good. I was like, no, please go in. And he was like, no, 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 we've got to find a park up. I'm not that worried. I was like, please just go in. It's so worth it. So yeah, 16 euros for both of us, but it it, it it was everything. You know, you saw all the pink flamingos. There must've been hundreds, thousands, and they were all there in the water. They were in the middle. So it's the middle of February and it looked like they were doing some of their kind of mating dances um you could see them preening some were far away some were really close up i'm just kind of rambling now but it was so good and the the colors on them and there's other birds in there as well there's like herons nesting in the trees storks these bright white birds and the flamingos they were just they were adorable you know they were just the color the pink colors and when they opened their wings which you didn't see too often it was like this deep pink red almost and it, it, it was like fire you know absolutely incredible um but yeah so steam's gone in now we didn't want to take the chance i've kind of digressed here a little bit and yeah i mean we're only a week into our trip you know it we didn't want something bad to happen that soon hopefully crime wise you know there's obviously going to be times when we're going to have to leave the van we have to go in supermarkets we did yesterday in the town we felt quite safe because it was kind of like a an air it was a one you pay for but it was like a you know stop over for the night and it was about 15 minute walk to the town but we felt really safe and nothing said otherwise whereas this one I just, I just didn't want to take the chance so yeah we've taken it in turns but amazing flamingo park the Camargue region is well worth visiting and there were people about um and lots of people with cameras and all sorts of things somebody even tried to film me like interview me and then realized I wasn't French so didn't bother um so <laughs> there are people about but it it doesn't matter because there's plenty of walkways and there's loads of little spots by the side of the ponds if i don't know what you call them like ponds lakes of sorts um for you to actually photograph the birds and see them so yeah you, you, it doesn't feel overcrowded at all which i was worried about when i saw all the cars out here but it's big enough that it really doesn't matter um maybe not the case all the time but certainly on a on a tuesday afternoon in february it was perfect I've heard there's lots of mosquitoes in the summer, so I think we've come at the perfect time of year, to be honest, because the sun's beaming down, it's still really warm, um, but you haven't got any of that mosquito trouble. Not really. And flamingos. Flamingos, just, ah, incredible. Well worth it. And that's kind of a really lovely way to end our France trip, which it sort of will now, because we're going to, we might have a day or two more here, but then we're going to head into Spain after that. So yeah, let's hope Stephen enjoyed it. Well, Stephen did enjoy the flamingos, but for some reason we didn't film it, which is about typical for us. Anyway, on to the next part. Where are we off to today, Stevie? We're off to Spain. We're off to Spain. Yeah, so we're off to Spain today. Quite exciting. So that's going to be good. We're going to cross the border in a minute. Um, we've been in the south of France for a couple of days and we've loved France. It's been really beautiful. There's so many places to explore, but we kind of thought it's time to move on, time to move into Spain. And in the south of France, um, it started to get really complicated and a bit more stricter for um, 
for parking basically so we kind of thought no let's just make our way because we might have spent a couple more days there otherwise um so there was a lack of airs and lots more height barriers it was like being back in england again to be honest um but really lovely place i'm not saying it wasn't you know impossible to find places and there were campsites as well we did stay on some pay paid for airs um in, in over a couple of days but yeah it's just started to get a bit stricter and we kind of thought let's move on you know we've, we've seen what we wanted to see there as well the main thing which was the flamingos which was wonderful um and france is really expensive as well now everywhere is expensive cost of living etc you know i know it's all going up um, but france seems a little bit more pricey than the uk and it's kind of like we thought no you know, we don't want to spend too much time here i don't know if spain is much cheaper i'm assuming it's a little bit cheaper but you know it's just if it's a little bit cheaper, that's a benefit right now. So we're going to head towards that. And it's just a new destination. So it's exciting. We're going to go. Spain. See you later. Sí. Sí. Adios. Adios. I think we're at our last French toll. Is this the last French toll, Steve? Yes, yeah, it's, it. it's the last one before we go into Spain. And we are in Spain. We're in Spain, Steve. So I've been waiting ages to film us crossing the border <laughs> from France into Spain and I completely missed it because the crossing was completely undramatic. There's nothing there. There was like a tiny sign saying Espana and it was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like no fanfare or anything, not even like the, the Spanish flag. Just, just, just like, that was it. Just a regular road sign. But anyway, we're here, we're in Spain. Start the Spanish trip, Steve. Si, senor. I say see you in Spain, but we're in Spain. See you at the air. Right, so where are we, Steve? Um, Paralaga. Paralada. 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 I think Paralada. We're in Paralada. So this is our first stop in Spain. And we made it across the border, mm -hmm. which was very undramatic and nothingy. <laughs> By which I mean, like you didn't even notice you'd cross the border, not really. Yeah, so we're in Peralada and had a really good night's sleep. It's free. There's quite a few other motorhomes here. Um, you can only stay for 48 hours, although I imagine out of season it's not so much of a big deal because we do plan to stay here for two nights. So we won't be here for more than 48 hours, but I doubt anyone's going to move you on at this time of year. But today is a work day, so I'm back on the laptop. I'm still trying to work through these YouTubes. Um, hopefully we've got enough power. We can put the solar panel up to get some power for the battery pack so I can keep my laptop charged. I don't know how we're gonna upload it. We still need a Spanish SIM card and really I'd like to be connected to Wi-Fi to upload it, but we'll see. The main thing is getting it done today and getting it just finished on the laptop, ready for Sunday. And then we can find some Wi-Fi somewhere, hopefully. Because I don't know how much data we can use via a SIM card to upload this. I, you know, I'd, it cost us a lot the last time, didn't it, in data. But this, I'm itching to get exploring again because it's really nice around here. So we're going to do that when it's sort of siesta time. Everything shuts up. Okay, so I've just done a, quite a bit of YouTube, which is good. Made good progress on that. I'm a bit ahead of last week. And now we're going to go and explore the little town of Peralada, or however you say it. I keep saying however you say it because I'm always conscious of saying it wrong. But we're going to go and explore that little town we're in and go and explore the streets because it's beautiful. The pretty village of Peralada, situated in Catalonia in northeastern Spain, might well be one of the first places you stop if travelling from France, particularly if you're looking for airs. The air here is free, peaceful, and a few minutes walk to Peralada's sleepy streets, which we took the opportunity to explore while everything closed for siesta. It struck us how different the architecture quickly changed from that of France, with so much use of sandy-coloured stone walls and rich yellows and oranges, instantly setting it apart from the country we'd just left behind us.
obviously like when we were in France we were just amazed by how wonderful all the buildings looked and somebody summed it up by saying how it looks like Disney and it's like yeah it really does and now we've come to Spain and it's a completely different look and we're completely bowled over it's like our sen sensory overload isn't it all these colours all the brickwork it's new to us you know and it's like but at the moment it's like I can't imagine ever getting tired of this it's so bloody gorgeous <laughs> it's all I can sum it up as and it's lovely I can't believe we get to see it taking our little van over here and we get to walk around these streets it's like never thought we'd get to do that I'm just walking down an alleyway but I'm just so happy it's just brilliant look at these colours I just love it And with our time in Perilada done, we headed further into Spain on our journey. Join us next week as we stumble across a bustling seaside town hosting a four-day carnival of music, dancing and costumes and spend time exploring its palm tree lined seafront and historic past. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more and press the notification bell to keep up with our adventures. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.